Huh, Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. Um, Urzatron says volume of content feels rushed or hollow unless they are coupled with depth of content. And that is where I think RE6 failed. It was big, but not deep. Amen to that. Yeah, it's it's very like on the surface. Like I, I feel like if it, 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 it feels like the movies almost where it's like, all right, we have Leon here and we have Chris here, but really it's just generic male A and, you know, generic male B. Like it's, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's not, uh, there, there's, you could have almost exchanged. Well, I mean, Leon, I mean, I guess Leon, it kind of felt like he had to be there because Sherry Birkin was there. So there was some connection there with their stories. But I mean, Chris's story felt really just kind of forced. Like, all right, he's this captain leader guy and he got his team killed. And now he's like suffering from amnesia and PTSD. And it's just, it's just like very bad storytelling in Jill. the sense that the movies do. Very. So I agree with you. Not, not a lot of depth there. Lil C says added you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. I'm at like 400 or 464, 465 right now. I'm trying to get to 500 because I have five like sets of prizes that I, I got from Comic-Con. One of them is a signed copy of Resident Evil 5 for the Xbox One. Uh, I figured, you know, there's got to be a Resident Evil fan out there that would like a signed copy of that, uh, that game. So, uh, so I want to try to give one away, but I'm trying, I want to do a big, you know, giveaway when we hit 500 subscribers and we'll give away five prizes. But like I said, I'm also going to, even before I get to 500 subscribers, I'm still going to do a giveaway. I'm going to try to pick up something from the Resident Evil merch truck in San Francisco. Uh, I'll try to get, you know, whatever I can afford and we will, um, thank you, Barry. We'll do a giveaway maybe next weekend, either on my oh, YouTube channel or on the everything. Twitch stream. Or maybe if I get two prizes, we'll do one on YouTube and one here. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Everything I tell him to. Oh. Oscar, but thank you so much for adding me, Lil C. Well, you shouldn't worry too much, dear. You'll be free of all this anyway. Why eliminate stars? Believe it or not, that's Umbrella's intention. You're just a slave Do you guys remember the umbrella. watches that came out when this game came out? There was like these really nice, expensive watches the uh, that they made, uh, Star's watches, because if you look, like, this I think laboratory. Chris and Barry and Wesker, Barry I can't remember if Jill has right one, there. but I think they all they all have these like really nice Barry. watches. Um, you gotta love Barry. He must really be afraid of Umbrella. You and Umbrella took his family, you bastard. passcode entry I think it was well let's let's just examine this room for some more I think it was five six nine one that was a, a code I read earlier and we never used but uh, but I think actually you get the actual code from from this here so we'll use this so we got a little slideshow here uh, umbrella bioorganic weapon official report the BOW report MA39, the Cerberus, we ran into those. The dogs, they killed me numerous times in my first play, uh, my first uh, stream. The FI-03 Neptune, we got the shark there. The MA-121 Hunter, I did remember their number right, that's good, but I forgot the MA. Um, and the T-002 Tyrant, Type 2 Tyrant. And then we have the Bioorganic Weapons Research Group and Development Staff. Um, possibly a familiar face there. Um, that guy looks uh, unusually familiar, and he's wearing sunglasses. 8462. Okay, so 5691. I don't know what that code went to, but we didn't need it. So we'll put in 8462. Yay. Oh, snap, secret door. All right, so there's a health spray there, but up, I mean, I don't know. I got like a ton of health sprays. Make sure there's nothing else we need over here. Nope, nope. There is something over here, though. Uh, level one heliport for ex executive use only. 
So let's talk about how the elevators work. We got E. Smith, S. Ross, A. Wesker must be present if viral use is authorized. So we just got some vital information about someone on our team that might not be who they say they are. Or at least uh, not a friend. Okay, shotgun shells. I will say this, by the time we get to the final boss, I will have a ton of ammo to kick the crap out of it. So here's some editing software. This is finally where we put the view Kenneth's tape. So I'll be quiet. Check this out. Oh, brutal, dude. Then he got his head chewed off. But we'll come in here. We won't grab the canister yet. We'll, we'll, we'll ice everything. We'll kill all the chimeras. And we'll, um... Nice. I hear you, man. got to back up too because the these things they will take a final swipe at you much like the hunters they will take one more swipe at you um <laughs> for sure all right so maybe we won't kill all the chimeras right now because i think you might actually have to just because you kill them now i think they respawn later So here's the other MO disc. Pull these levers, and you'll get to see what's back here. Here's like just a terrible place to work. That's how bad this place looks. Chris? Jill. Chris, Wesker's the... I know. I can't open it. Just wait, I'll be back. Okay. But this really isn't that long of a game. It really isn't. Um... I mean, obviously, that comes down to how, you know, how well you are at it, how forgetful you are at puzzles and stuff. And, I mean, obviously, I had my fair share. I think we, we did, what, three three-hour streams and, like, a 20-minute stream. So, uh, so about nine and a half hours. It's, it's a pretty good length, especially for a game that I spent, like, I think ten bucks on. Because I bought, it's, I got this with the Resident Evil Collection, so it's zero and one. I think I spent twenty dollars for both of them. So, um... That's pretty good. Ten dollars for this game and get about ten hours of gameplay. It's pretty awesome. It's better than uh, going to a movie. Chris! Rebecca. I saw you in the in her garden. Why didn't you say up. something? Well, I'm glad you're okay. Where were you when I was carrying nitrous around? No more following. <laughs> Just stay with me, kid. That's my plan, sir. Rebecca's kind of like your little sister in this, in a way. Like, I think originally Rebecca was the, in the lore in the storyline. She's supposed to be your like the Alpha Team's medic, but because she's so young she, and she didn't have any field experience, when the Bravo Team went to investigate the murders, uh, Kenneth, who is the medic of the Bravo Team, who's the videotape we watched, Kenneth uh, brings you along. Um, you know, like, uh, and he want, you know, so you can get some field experience. So that's ultimately why she ended up on the Bravo team. So I don't think she's actually a member of the Bravo team. I think she's supposed to be on Alpha team. So yeah, we saw the shotgun shells back there. I'm not going to grab them yet because there's going to be things in this room I might need to grab. And, 
you know, I, I don't want to clog up all my inventory slots. Wesker. So you've come. Chris, you make me proud. Of course, you are one of my men. Thanks. <laughs> Since when, Wesker? I'm afraid I. So you see Chris kind of slowly about. moving. Since when have they been slipping you a paycheck? In front of uh, Rebecca. Because the gun's aimed kind of at her. I think now it's aimed at you. Confused. I've always been with Umbrella. And stars were Umbrellas. No, rather, my little piggies. The Tyrant virus leaked, polluting this whole place. And unfortunately, I had to give up my lovely members of stars. You killed them with your own dirty hands. You son of a bitch. No. Oh, yes, dear. Just like this. Uh, Rebecca! Oh. Don't move. You. I don't think you want to die just yet. I have something that's of some interest to you. I don't know why this thing's of interest of Chris's. <laughs> Tyrant comes out, Chris, I am your father. It's like, no! My dad, Tyrone, is the Tyrant all along. How did I not know? <laughs> Tyrone Redfield. <laughs> uh. The ultimate life form. Tyrant. <laughs> Wesker, you've become senile. Chris, you'll never understand. It's magnificent. Oh! Yep. See ya. Toss aside like yesterday's trash. Um, so basically Wesker's plan, since it's not really spelled out for anyone, um, Come on, he is test tube freak. He's after the combat data of each of these creatures. So, uh, alright, so we only get one of these shots, so we're going to make sure we use it. it. That does a ton of damage, and I know it doesn't look or sound like it, but... Oof. Eat shit. Alright, he's down. Alright, so... What a pathetic way to die. He's holding something. The discovery of the G-Virus is, in fact, 21 years after the administration of the primogenitor virus. Um, I thought it was just the progenitor virus. Maybe that's a typo? Um, the prototype parasite, which we had delivered from a laboratory in France, was administered to sample specimen. The sample specimen took in the parasite. So this this prototype parasite is like the stage one of the nemesis parasite. Uh, Urzatron was telling me about this last night, and they put it into Lisa uh, after she started to, um, you know, bond and mutate with the T virus, and they put it in there to see what the results would be. And then what she ended up doing is absorbing it and, and kind of. Um, uh, digesting it in a way and gave something back to them and what she gave back was uh, something that they were able to pull the the G virus or what they named the G virus from and that was going to be that's going to be the next virus that's the virus in Resident Evil 2 with William Birkin and William Birkin is uh, this guy here who's writing this letter um, is a partner of Wesker's as they reveal in um in Resident Evil Zero, and then he's here talking about, uh, I can't wait to see the look on Alexia's annoying face when I finally announce my research, and Alexia is part of the Ashford family that is the head of, you know, Code Veronica, or the, the storyline in Code Veronica, um, where the Ashford family was also one of the families that helped fund and found Umbrella with Oswald E. Spencer, and Alexia is the daughter, and she has a twin brother named Alfred, and they uh, and she ex she came up with a new virus called the T Veronica virus and injected herself and froze herself in cryogenic stasis so that she could become one with the virus over the, a certain amount of years. So um, so that letter, I mean that that one note there ties this storyline, you know, to a couple different games. 
which is pretty cool. Now, granted, all the games had come out at that point, and that letter was added to the um, to the uh, this edition of the game. That wasn't in the original um, Resident Evil. People always like, oh, well, you know, when you plan ahead and stuff. And it, there was there, there's that now with like, you know, movies like uh, the Marvel Universe and DC. What they're trying to do, they try to plan the next four or five movies while they're doing one, like the current one. And you can see sometimes that makes for bad movies because they're not focusing on the one they're doing. So this is from it's a time a when you were wearing your bulletproof vest. people made things up as they There's went along. Left for us to do here. So they would make Resident Evil 1, and if in Resident Evil 2 something contradicted it, they would just hope that later on they could go back and make a change, you know, and try to keep the continuity the best they could. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But we're going to save after, like not right here at the top of the stairs like we did before in the lab lounge. We're going to go and get Jill, and then we're going to save as we near the final stretch. Yes? What is it? I found a file in the lab. Apparently, there's still a lot of tyrant virus here. We should blow this whole place up. Right. The show must go on. I'll leave that up to you, Rebecca. I'm on it. I'll start the self-destruct system I found a little while ago. It's not like we're out of this yet. I'll see you on the outside. Outside. All right, good thing I killed all those monsters, because I think they would give her... I think she could possibly die or something. I don't know if I didn't do if I didn't kill those chimeras. Um, but let's go get Jill before the self-destruct sequence activates. Or never mind. <laughs> Rebecca, you're a little too fast. Yep. All right. I just want the I want those things dead so that when I bring Jill out, she doesn't there's no risk of us getting hurt. So what Wesker was planning was he was um he needed all the combat data from all the monsters, so he he knows like he um, he originally founded Star. Stars was his idea. He didn't know exactly when Jill, and how he was going to need them. You wait. But I knew you'd come. Let's get he had a here. plan in place to use them for something at at some point. And uh, and what happened is something happened in the lab and, and accelerated his plans and, and Birkin's plans. Um, and so. Uh, so he had to, you know, move up his plans and everything. And so the stars team, who's, you know, just recently formed and already, you know, being sent into action, Wesker talked the police chief into sending them in. Originally, the police chief wouldn't wouldn't be able to because they're too new to send them in on something like that. Uh, there would be a lot of red tape that they would have to go through. So they actually mentioned that Let's in one of the going. games that uh, Wesker, you know, kind of revealed that he knew that the police chief was dirty, um, which is something they get into in the second game. So, uh, so that's how he was able to, to pull that string and get the stars team sent in and what he, what he needed them to do. And then he sabotaged the Bravo team's helicopter to make sure that it would, you know, malfunction and it would strand them because he figured, all right, these are special forces people. They, they could handle themselves, but I got to make sure that there's, there's no way out for them in those woods and that they get killed. And, uh, and then after, you know, the, I guess all the creatures, like the hunters and all that stuff have some kind of you know chip or something in them that is sending information to these uh, master computers at this lab wesker needed to come in and get all that information and the last thing he needed was the the tyrant so he had to set the he needed at least one survivor like chris to stick the tyrant on and watch the tyrant kill him and then download the tyrant's you know uh battle info so that he could take that info and and uh, sell it to like you know another company that's kind of the the angle he's working at here angel says i follow you on instagram and youtube now hey thank you so much angel that is come on, awesome come on, hurry. i will definitely follow you back as soon as this stream's over i'll go check out all my accounts and i'll do that pass through all doors pick up all items oh okay interesting okay i didn't oh man i don't know if i knew about that so you pick up you have to pick up everything because there are so many herbs that I left behind. I guess that's probably easier to do in like normal slash hard mode because there's less items and so you're kind of more forced to pick everything up because you kind of need them. Um, so that's cool. I you know I forgot about that achievement. That's awesome. It's 
It's pro <laughs> probably because when I played on the... Um, was that on the on the GameCube? Did they give you some kind of reward for that? Because I it, it it's funny. I'm, I'm definitely like I try to get a lot of achievements now when I play games on the Xbox. Uh, I love you know upgrading my um, gamer it, score and stuff. We're almost there. But Jill, the uh, just in contact with Brad. No. It's weird we thinking of you know when I played Jill. these games back when they came out on GameCube and all that yes. stuff. Would you, let me have you had to like beat too? modes to unlock special right. things, we'll run but, like invisible point. enemy mode. I think gave you something and so forth, and I think you got some kind of reward for not using any herbs. But I mean health sprays, but there was no achievements back then, so uh, it, it's cool to see them when they re-release these games, like what they make you do to get achievements. Because I'm like, oh man, I don't think I ever did that when I played it, you know, back then. So that's that's kind of cool. That sounds like a fun achievement to try to to go after one day. What about you guys? Anyone have a favorite Resident Evil weapon? Jill, you made it. Oh, no problem, Angel. Uh, I will, uh... You're, you're, you're... Okay, cool. I will, I will follow you on Twitter, no problem. I'll look you up when this is, uh, when we're done with this, during the final cutscene. I'll do it before I forget. Lil C says shotgun. Ah, oh, nice. Which shotgun? Like in, like in which Resident Evil game? Or just in general? Like, you just get happy when you see a shotgun. I know my friend does too. One of my friends, Eric, he used to, he would always sing a little shotgun song. He, he, he would be like, shoddy shoddy, who likes to party? <laughs> like, he would always do that little jingle every time he picked up a shotgun. Whoa. Urza Tron says, favorite weapon in RE? Resident Evil 3 grenade launcher with freeze rounds. Amen. Oh my god, I love the freeze rounds. Good call. Jill, use it. Kill it, whatever it is. Uh, does Becky count as a creature? <laughs> uh, Lil C says uh, Hydra and any shotgun, period. LOL. Nice. The Hydra in Resident Evil 5, good call. I love that weapon. I think that was the last thing I unlocked. Um, or I think I'm working on it right now. In my last playthrough of Resident Evil 5, I think I was working on it to reach it to unlimited ammo. All right, and then here comes Brad, just in time. Make sure Jill and, and Rebecca are okay. They held their own, man. Some tough girls. Achievement unlocked. The nightmare ends. Finish the game saving Rebecca and Jill using Chris. So yeah, there's different achievements for the different endings you get. And there's a bunch of different endings in this. There's even a, 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 a version where the house doesn't explode. Um, because there's no one left alive to set off the self-destruct sequence or something. Like you, Because Rebecca's gone and Jill's gone because you didn't save her. And, uh, and, and Wesker's dead. So yeah, there's even a version where you're just flying away and the house is just still there. And I think that was actually used in one of the comic books. And, uh, or, or no, it was, no, the house did explode and then some of the debris and like a zombie fell into the, the river and that river water washed down into Raccoon City or something. And they were trying to say that that was a, another way to help that help spread the infection. All right. Well, that was Resident Evil, the HD remake of the first game originally came out in GameCube, I think in 2002 or three. And, uh, and just a phenomenal game. I mean, I really love it. It's got, I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, there's not much of a story there. There really is. And I know I talked over some of it and I, I, there is things you got to fill into. Um, and just things that we as fans know f from the transition from the original version of the game to the new one. Um, there's some stuff that got lost in translation or they, d they didn't make cutscenes for. I feel like you get a little bit more story when you play as Jill because she interacts with Barry a little bit more and, uh, and there's a little bit more going on over there, but uh, but ultimately that you know the story 
it seems very thin on the surface, but I, I, I like that. Uh, I mean, that's, I think that's why the movies are so thin in a story uh, level, because I think Paul Anderson just watched like his kid play. And I know Mila Jovich watched her little brother play Resident Evil. And that's what made them interested in making a movie version. But on the surface, just watching it, you, you kind of don't feel like there's a lot of story to this game, but there really is. And, and these are pretty deep characters. And as the games progress, you, you know, get a better sense of who they are and, and, and what they stand for and what they're capable of. So there's a lot of that. And, um, Oh, here we got a, a comment in here from the chat. Uh, C12H16N2 uh, it says, "Good God, your knowledge of the lore was a great touch. Thanks for the stream. I enjoyed it. Peace." Oh, dude, thanks so much. Uh, I, I thank you. Those are very kind words. I, um, yeah, I wish Urzatron was here tonight. He was helping me out uh, yesterday with some of the lore too. That some of the stuff that I kind of forgot. Um, so I know if he watches this on YouTube, he'll probably correct me on a few things, but. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to bring to the stream. Like, I know there's a lot of great streamers out there who do, uh, you know, play these games and, and they're just really knowledgeable about games in general and how games are developed and stuff. But for me, like Resident Chris, Evil, I've, I've did tried to learn job. everything I could about Resident Evil um, behind the scenes and during the making of. So that's what I wanted to hopefully bring to this. So I really appreciate that you uh, like that. And I, it looks like I had another achievement called You're to Man, You to Man. And we beat this in seven hours and 40 minutes. It felt like longer. I'm pretty sure it was three three-hour streams. So, um, and we also got another achievement. Uh, I'm in no mood to die because we beat on easy. So I thought I picked normal um, at first, but it turns out what's this other achievement? Like taking candy from a baby, beat the game on very easy or higher. So I thought the the game was hard, normal, easy, and it was actually normal, easy, very easy. So I picked the one in the middle, thinking it was normal mode. It was actually not normal mode. Hey, all right, six hours. Uh, 89 creatures dispatched, ammo used, 285, 11 ink ribbons, uh, health in this together, uh, finished the game with Jill and Chris, we're in this together, achievement unlocked, um, and 20 health items used. That's cool. That's like a third of the ones I used for Chris's. Alpha Team's finest achievement unlocked, finished the game using Jill. Jeez, there's a lot of achievements for beating it. So, uh, yeah, that's it for me tonight, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot to me. You guys hung, hung in there and, and with all the kind words really meant a lot. I'll be back next weekend and I'll have a ton of stories to tell you about Resident Evil 7 and my experiences at the Capcom headquarters this week. So thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. This open window can lead somewhere or nowhere. It's up to you. What do you mean? Who is this? It's Chris. Why won't you believe me? All right. Let me go back to the beginning. My fight against bio-warfare all started in a zombie-infested ghost town. It was September 1998. My first an only day as a police officer. Get down! Move! Not bad. I never thought any of this stuff my brother taught me would work. Stars. A special force issue, huh? It's my brother's. That's why I'm here. To find him. I'm Claire Redfield. Hey. Leon Kennedy. <laughs>